Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and today I'm starting a series on rock facing stones, carving stones, how they built these old buildings that are hundred and some years old. Now, I live between Scranton and Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, and we have a lot of good examples here. And I'm going to start out with limestone because limestone is the, is, uh, the softest stone. And then we're going to graduate into other types of stone, granite, marble, sandstone. But I'm going to show you how they built these old buildings. And if you're a mason, you should know how to do this. So let's go to Scranton first and take a look at the courthouse. Today we're in front of the courthouse in Scranton. We're going to walk up to it. I'm going to show you what we're talking about. We're walking up to the building. And it's an interesting building. There's been parts added on. But we're going to look at these stones that are faced. This is what you call a faced stone. Some people call it dressing. It's rugged. This is a sandstone. We get up in here, we have limestone. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we recreate some of this stuff. Now this is more of a new school recreation kind of thing. And it's at the University of Scranton, you can see. But this is a limestone pillar. And they just basically made it out of limestone. It was cut and sometimes not too good but it all came out good at the end this is all done at a shop down like Thomas Eddy's but this is all cut limestone and then it's faced and we're gonna talk about doing that to start with I have a lot of different examples I got limestone right here you see this when they fix steps or they're doing cathedrals I did a lot of videos on that I have granite on top here I have Pennsylvania bluestone. I have Pennsylvania sandstone. I'll explain that from Godino's Quarry. And I got marble here. And basically, when we rock face these, we all rock face them the same way. It's just that some are harder than others. Now, the first example is limestone. And let me get a closer view of it. Now, this is limestone. If you're going to go and get steps, this is usually what you put on your steps. And this is a piece of limestone that they do some carving over. And if you look at it real close, you can see the seams go this way. And you can see the little crustaceans in there from all the little seashells. It's from seabeds. So if you're going to be a carver, you're going to want to carve that stone where it lays flat with the grade as God produced it. All right. Now they're getting into fancy stuff where they saw everything. And if you go to a lot of... Uh, old buildings this is weather beaten but they built a lot of the courthouses and the churches and everything with limestone and I'll get into that a little more I'm just gonna explain it to you the reason I picked these two pieces of limestone is because you could get a little butter knife and you could carve into that stone limestone is very soft I did that with a butter knife the same on this one and there's different grades of limestone you could carve into that and I just want to make sure you see that. See that carve how deep I went in that with just a little butter knife? So this is what, if you go to churches and you look up around the sides, all the carvings are usually done with this. I'm showing you a couple examples now. It was done with limestone. I have here a lot of pitching tools and this is flat. This one I've been beating on granite with. This is another one I was beating on granite with. They're almost a little beveled. These are some older ones I had laying around. That's got a little pitch to it, a little pitch to it. That has a pitch to it. But these are all what they call pitching tools. And if you're going to be doing anything when you are rock facing, you go back usually about yeah, a half inch and you get your pitching tool and you rock face it and you don't go straight down with it because these kind of chisels will cut straight down and I'll do a little example of that see it went all the way down so you, when you're, you're you have to kind of know how to pitch this now my friend Wayne Faree he uh, was a carver at the National Washington Cathedral and he has a couple examples on how to do this. I'm going to turn you out to his channel later on. We go back a half inch here. And we get the pitching tool again. And our little hammer. And we rock face it. 
That's how we rock face it. Just like that. Now that's a rock face piece of stone. You can also get a little flat chisel like that. Make sure you're on the line to kind of clean it up a little bit. You see that? But basically that's a rock face stone. Now, when you're using a pitching tool, you want to go deeper. So you got to cut that off to go into there. Sometimes you got to take a little bit of effort at a time. And you get down into it. And you and you you tip your tool accordingly. You're going to go a little farther. And we go over here. We I'm going to take a guess here instead of using a line. See that? That's rock faced. Now we want to get a little bit crazy here to get a clean line. Get our clean line. You get the idea. Now we're going to take this one. This is a little bit bigger. I can't exactly see where it's at, but we usually square it. Let's see if I can't get it. Everything's in the way here. We're gonna square it. We all square is a big thing on stonework. I think we'll go back to about there. All right. So we know we gotta square it to there. We know we gotta square it to here. We put this back, and we get over here. Square it there. Then we go over here to see where our square is at. Everything's in the way as usual. Then we go over here to find our lines. Make sure they line up. It's a little short. We're going to square it down to this. But first, we're going to take our pitching tool. We're going to, I know it's going to, from experience, I know what's going to happen. It's going to go right to there. See that? That's my first part of the rock face. I'm going to turn it around to my line here. Oh, see I chipped it. I chipped it. So if you do that, you got to go back a little farther. When you get to the ends, that's always an issue. Go back a little farther. And sometimes we gotta go this way, like that. Now that's a faced piece of limestone. Just like you looked at that sample when you were at Scranton. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get over here into this side. We're gonna rock face this. When you're rock facing something, sometimes you just gotta start from this end so you don't chip it, like that. Turn it around, and you got to be careful, like that, like that, not too bad. Now I rock face this, keep hitting that camera, and I rock face this side, I get my little flat chisel to make sure it's Good and straight. Now when we're finished with this, we want to have a straight line. Actually, you know, you could just carve it like this with a straight line. But mostly a guy who knows what he's doing all the time will just get the chisel and keep working it real slow like this until he gets that straightness in there. So then when you're laying the stone, you have something to go by. See that? And you could really, with limestone, you could actually carve that in there like that. And as I also did it to this stone, when you're lining these up, and you have your line going up, that kind of gives you a straight line to go by. I showed you the basics of rock facing limestone. Now I'm going to go a little deeper and talk about shaping limestone. So what I want to do is go to a bank down in Exeter, Pennsylvania, and show you what I call by carving a drop off. 
We're on a little busy highway here, but this is an old limestone bank. And what they have right here is what they call a step up. Comes up to here, steps up again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate that step up. So I got another piece of limestone and I carved this end and I carved this end. And we're gonna carve this end. If you wanna call it carving or shaping. And the reason is we're gonna get this stone, which is gonna go right on top of there. And we're gonna put a 45 so it matches this. We got the camera a little closer. And we're gonna put a 45 from here down so it matches. Because if we don't do that, let's turn it this way. We put it up here. We're going to have a ledge, which the birds will be sitting on and the water will lay on. So we're not going to do that. So we're going to carve it. I moved the camera so we get a close-up view. It's, it's awful bright for the camera. And anytime you're doing limestone or anything, you have to make a pattern. So what we're going to do is we go over here and we switch our pattern to there. We draw our line. That's our angle. Go to the back of the stone. We put our pattern up like that because it has to fit the bottom of the stone. We draw our angle. Then we come over here with our square because you have to use a lot of squares with uh, limestone. That's that one. We got down here. I think we'll go this way with it. Let's see. We're going to go this way with it. I think we're going to go to that point. So that's basically our line. Now, these are just, this is actually a wood chisel, and that's just to make a point. This is just a regular chisel. I'm not going crazy with it. I got a hammer. I'm just using an old junky hammer. We're going to start from here and just chip it away. We don't want to get too close to the line. Get over this side, chip it away, and keep going back until we get to our line. If that makes sense. Same thing on this side. We're going to go back till we hit that line. We don't want to take too much off. Like that. That's pretty close. Get rid of the excess. And keep going back until we get to our line. You don't want to be scared of limestone. Limestone is soft. This way we got to go up with a little bit. Uh-oh. It went too deep. I made my first mistake. Maybe not. back and chip it away. close now. Now we're just going to get ourselves, this is actually a wood file. We don't want to scare anybody. We're actually going to file it. When we get to our ends, we're going to be a lot closer, of course. 
Keep filing it. So you get the idea. So you can't be scared of limestone. Sometimes you gotta cheat. <laughs> how we did here we did pretty good just get ourselves a piece of sandpaper go over the top of it like this that'll smooth that all out you can even do it here if you want to brighten it up now we're going to put our piece on that's going to go second how's it going to fit perfect see it comes up we got the drop off and then it goes up now this is awful dirty so just a little trick here how are you or how am i going to make this match this if I'm restoring something. I go to my dad's garden, I get myself some mud, and I do the mud trick. And believe me, sometimes you have to do that when you're working on old buildings. That's gonna dry up. You see that? This is old, this is gonna look old. You could do it to the rest of the whole stone, or you can go crazy Get the sandpaper, do that, do that to make it match, no big deal. There's always a way to do that. See, we can bring that back to life again with just a little bit of sandpaper. I did my demonstrations on rock face and carving. This is an old piece of steps. So you don't be scared of limestone. It's very simple. You get a, a hammer. You can rock face it this way, see that, you practice with it, you get it on this way, get it on this way, get yourself some chisels, like this, practice with it, it'll tell you what to do, and you can practice this way with it, like I did, and I'm not a carver, okay, get yourself a file, see what happens when you file it, limestone is soft, before we go, I'm going to go to a limestone building that's in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Every time I drive by it, I look at it and I admire it. Let me show it to you. This is one of my favorite buildings that's built out of limestone. Limestone is easy to cut. But this is all faced, you see? And it's cut. Limestone just has the crustaceans in it. And then they put a roping on it. I did that once on my channel. And right in here you can see the spacers they use. We're going to talk about that. The rest of the building is limestone. But it's one of my favorite buildings. All this was pre-made. I want to make a point. There's your limestone. When they built these old buildings, limestone facade would go like this. And then they would go inside with their other stones to lock this together. There was no wall ties. There was no metal. That's why they sit there for hundreds and hundreds of years and they don't fall apart with lime mortar. So that's the end of our video. I think I gave you the basics. When you get into limestone, you gotta understand that it's very soft. You've seen my videos on the pyramids. They are built out of limestone, 95%, and I'm very soft. You could carve it with a, a butter knife, no problem. Next video, we're probably gonna get into some sandstone and some bluestone. Maybe we're gonna get to visit the quarries. We're gonna go and do some marble work. We're gonna look at a marble church. We're gonna work on some granite. This is my pitching tool. I have a friend who's been on my channel before, Wayne Faree, I want you to check his channel out. He was a carver on the National Washington Cathedral. And I'm gonna leave a link to his channel. And he did some work on my channel. I have a playlist called Limestone Masonry. This is a pitching tool. Sometimes you get them online. If I have an affiliate site, uh, I'll put a link to where you can get them. And that's about it until we get to our part two. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next video.